So as I said, these are the outcomes. So by the end of this particular session, you should have a clear idea of what uh, survey research is and to what extent is survey research practically applicable in the context of your research and how can you apply it. And then we will discuss in the second part of the presentation, we will talk about conducting interviews, interview as a research design, interviews as a methodology. And I'll also discuss about the kinds of interviews. So you, by the end of this session, you should have a clear idea of how uh, interviews will be quite pertinent to your study, how interviews will be a suitable approach or to what extent will the interviews be a proper strategy for your research. So these are the objectives. So a researcher is expected to have a clear idea on these lines. So this is the uh, you know outcome that we have set to achieve before we begin the session. Uh, and most importantly, just like every session, by the end of the session, I would like to ask you personal, um, more calibrated discussions with each one of you, not only to what extent you can apply the principles we discussed today, but to help you to give some examples from your study, because I have been giving some examples in the context of your research. But today, I would be really happy if you give examples from the uh, context of your study. So these, these are some of the broad plans or the broad objectives for the day. So having set the scene, let me share the slide with you and discuss the various nitty gritties of both these designs. And you will understand out of the two designs I discussed today, one design will exclusively fit for ELT research and the another design will fit both for ELT and literature research. So sometimes, uh, I mean, students, researchers who are doing research in literature may not be in assonance with certain strategies we discuss. But nevertheless, knowing those strategies is no harm. Maybe you can you can try some new dimensions in ELT research. So let me start the presentation for the day by sharing the screen with you. Am I presenting the screen? Yes, sir. See, let us start a presentation today just by reflecting on certain questions. When, when you reflect on these questions, you will know why there is a methods chapter and why a researcher should understand about methods. It's just this uh, similar example which I gave you the other day. Like if you want to prepare a particular recipe, you know, you use certain ingredients and you use certain processes to prepare the recipe. Now, if you prepare the recipe and show me how to do it, and if I do the same, I should get the same result. That is the methodology. That is the purpose of the methodology session. But anyway, uh, an individual may have their own uh, spice that will perk up the taste. That's a different uh, preposition altogether. But you will get a similar dish. That's the point. So the method section is it should help any researcher to replicate what you are doing. So you are saying that this is what I did in my research. This is my step A. After that, I did step B. I did step C. And this was my result. You clearly document any future researcher, if they read what you did, you moved from step A, what was your step A? And then you move to step B, what was your step B? And what was step C? And that particular researcher, if he follows the same procedure, he should get the same results. And that is the purpose of the methodology section. So methodology section uh, gives more chances for replicability. Whether it, were, whether it is a 
Lion or uh, Sharanya or Jeremy, whoever carries out the research, if they pro if they follow a process, the results are going to be the same, pr provided they use the same method, use the same topic. So that is the purpose of the methodology section. So uh, your methodology section should answer these research questions. Okay. First question is, what did you do to achieve your research aims? Method, step by step. What did you actually do to achieve your research aims? And reflect on the second question. Why did you choose this particular approach? Uh, I mean, in, I just would like to remind you of the previous weeks. We discussed about action research. We dealt with case study research. We dealt with uh, ethnography. So you should be able to justify why you are choosing this particular approach and why that particular approach will help you to answer your research questions. And as I said, you can even combine all these methods and call it as mixed method. So reflect on uh, why this particular method chooses, I mean, fits into the context of your research. Three. What tools did you use to collect the data? What do you mean by tools? Reflect on that. Did you use a questionnaire? Did you go and do a live uh, observation of your classes? Did you actually do a direct interview with the author that you're analyzing? Did you actually go and uh, do a demographic study? Suppose you are doing something on culture studies. Did you actually go and visit the culture and interview people there? So these are called the tools. Your interview could be a tool. Your questionnaire is a tool. you giving a pre-test and post-test is a tool. Uh, so we are going to discuss about certain tools that will be feasible to collect your data. Okay, what tools are you going to use? And why are you going to use those tools? And then fourthly, what implications does this choice have? Suppose if you are going to choose an interview and interview a particular author, you know, how, how is that choice going to help you to achieve your objectives, to achieve your results? Okay. And then time frame. When did you collect the data? What, which year? Which period? Did it take six months for you? Did it take two months for you? Or did you compile all the data in a span of one month? So the longer you spend for data collection, the more authentic your results are. The longer duration you spend for data collection, the more valid your results are. And the longer time that you spend for data collection, uh, you know, the, the, the more uh, trustworthy your data is. So it should usually be a longer uh, period of data collection. And from whom did you collect the data? Sample size. If it is an ELT research, did you collect from five students? Did you do a questionnaire with 50? Uh, did you do a questionnaire with 100? What was the target group? So these are some of the questions you need to ask. And then, did you have a timeline? Timeline. What do you mean by timeline? Did you have a clear plan? This was a time. This is my timeline for six months during my data collection. Jan, I will select the samples. Uh, you know, Feb, I will just go and conduct a research protocol and design the questionnaire. March, I will circulate the questionnaire to 100 people and get. And in the month of April, I'll collect all my data like that. So that, that's a timeline for data collection. So similarly, if, if you would just like to have an interview with the author that you are researching, did you fix an appointment with your author, with your primary researcher? Probably, suppose you're working on a novel and you're working on a novelist, perhaps a direct interview can make your method an interview method of data collection. You may read a lot about what others have said, but direct interview. Now, I would like to tell you a small, uh, give you a small live live example in this regard uh, about timeline. Actually, uh, I earlier told you that there are some researchers who are working on task based language teaching. I actually browsed for uh, interviews on task based language teaching. There, Rod Ellis gives a beautiful talk on what he means by task-based teaching. And he gives a lot of new areas. He says, 
although task based research task based language teaching is so much researched still there are some problematic areas and who says that rod ellis himself says that and he articulates the problematic areas so what are those problematic areas similarly he quotes david newnan in his talk he gives a 17 definitions of what task based teaching is you spend months and months to read so much but however if you go to youtube and watch his talks and spend one hour you will get a lot of information first hand information directly from the author and if you listen to his interviews there are other researchers you I mean if you uh, google in, i mean interviews with the rod ellis there is a podcast and a researcher is conducting an interview he actually answers a lot of the researcher's question and those are gold mines for you this this is called as you know the interview method of data collection you know it's really a gold mine because you may read a lot of books but it is like actual primary source so interview we are going to discuss about how you can set up an interview with an author how to structure your questions what are the different kind of interviews how to frame interviews we will be discussing about all that okay so these are some of the things you need to reflect on in terms of data collection and especially for people who are doing elt research you know uh, when you collect data did you actually pilot the data suppose you designed a questionnaire did you actually pilot the questionnaire piloting refers to just testing it before you do the real study did you actually test the questionnaire and then maybe you can discuss about the research setting which institute you collected the details who were your participants what are the sampling techniques and so on so this is just a preamble of my talk today that you need to reflect which will give you a kind of a broad on and all encompassing view on two designs one is actually the survey design and the other is the interview design a survey design is considered to be you know a quantitative design because you will analyze your data based on numbers whereas an interview is qualitative which means you will interpret the information interpretation of information so uh you may reflect on number of questions i have raised and if you reflect on all these questions you will have a deeper understanding on the importance of methods on the significance of methods and the gravity of methods in your research so let me now move to the two designs okay uh actually there was two ground breaking articles written in 2020 sorry 2021 uh, there are two articles written uh, these two articles figured in a leading journal on computers and education name of the one article is uh, benchmark for conducting qualitative research and the other article is guidelines for conducting quantitative research we will i will show you this finally so that you will have a better understanding so let us now go on to survey research let us imagine my first part of the talk is targeted towards the elt researcher my second part of the talk is targeted towards the literature researcher so now let me reflect on seven steps for elt researcher uh please be with me reflect on these aspects and uh, just give me some feedback at the end am i making myself clear to you yes sir yeah thank you yes let's say you are going to conduct a survey research any idea of what is a survey what does a survey mean anybody any idea of what's a survey just what is your understanding of a survey gathering data from uh, a group of people yeah correct thank you very much lion survey refers to gathering data from your target group of people suppose let's say that you are launching a product 
and people you would like to ask people if the product has reached so you ask a number of questions about the utility of the product survey or let us imagine that you are doing on doing your research on a pro particular methodology or let us say that you are doing a research on a particular skill a particular macro skill for example speaking now if you say based on your review that these are the problems related to speaking that is based on secondary data collection secondary but your primary data collection every field will have primary data collection and secondary data collection if you are working on a novelist if you directly meet the novelist and have an interview with them it is primary data collection if you read books about him it's secondary data collection in the same way in elt research in elt research if you choose a particular macro skill say speaking and just create a questionnaire on the different kind of problems that students encounter for example for pronunciation skills what are the different problems that they face and you generate all the questionnaire to the students and if they themselves answer that these are the problems then you really set the context by giving primary data straight from the horse mouth primary data suppose you conduct the same kind of survey among teachers teaching fraternity asking them what are the phonological problems that their students have and they actually make it objective and they give you 15 questioners 50 questioners from students and perhaps 50 questioners from teachers you actually set a beautiful context first hand information by justifying your problems and this is called a survey research that you actually collect primary data your data is not secondary similarly interview direct data gathering so that is step 1 step 1 what is your objective some of your objective could be to identify the pronunciation problems to identify speaking problems for some of you the objective could be to test cognitive uh, parameters for some of you it could be checking your you know writing skills every every research is subjective some research has theoretical objective what is the impact of you know we discussed about these terms uh, impact of you know any, any particular theory that we have discussed with say it multiculturalism or you know psychoanalysis or whatever what what is the uh, objective of your study so your objective and your questions should be in assonance with one another sometimes any researcher gives a question first thing you see is does his research topic does his research question and the questions that he has asked in the questionnaire are they in direct assonance okay suppose you are uh, discussing about phonological problems on your students and you ask a question on some general fluency or uh, vocabulary then maybe your survey question does not meet the objective so step a whenever you design a survey have a clear objective step 2 construct the questionnaire i'll give you in the remaining slides how to construct a well designed questionnaire and i'm sure that some of you would be doing it very soon as soon as you complete your coursework most probably elt researchers will start the research with some kind of survey with some kind of questionnaire or maybe uh, they may even think about interview as one of the methods of data collection and these are as i said primary ways to collect your data okay so construct your questionnaire how many questions are you going to ask it can be even 10 it can be 25 but the questions that you ask should be uh, the questions that you uh, discuss should be in assonance with yeah the questions that you discuss should be in assonance with your uh, objectives so that is step 2 so i hope you uh, clearly got what step 1 and what step 2 is 
step 1 is to you know know your clear objective and step 2 is to have a well designed questioner so step 3 okay let's say you are now collecting primary data i hope uh, so far in this lecture you might have understood the importance of primary data collection and primary data collection let me kind of re emphasize primary data collection adds so much of authenticity validity and reliability to your studies okay because you are showing live samples direct observation you have survey you have conducted survey you have conducted questionnaires so that is called a survey research the third step you should understand in survey research is decide the procedure for example to how many people are you going to generate the questionnaire are you going to ask this questionnaire to 25 people or to 50 students think about feasibility uh, what what will be the sample size that 5000 may not be feasible 100 would be feasible how many teachers are you going to target to know your problems say you choose 50 teachers definitely feasible so think about the sample size so how many people are you going to survey what is the age of those people and then think about how are you going to survey your subject are you going to give a direct questionnaire this is what i did during my times when i collected my data i used to attend a lot of conferences national conferences and seminars whenever i go for conferences and when i collect a teachers questionnaire uh, probably in each conference if say there are 50 uh, researchers who gathered there a confluence of 50 researchers i give my questions to uh, i target who are the elt researchers there i just commonly give my questions but most probably i find teachers who who is to researchers who are either teaching or they may have some grounding on research so i give them questioners so say i can i mean i attend five national conferences i may definitely have at least 250 questioners with me and moreover the response rate is quite high when you are giving your question to people who have the great attitude maybe students the response rate is very low you have to encourage them you have to remind them but then and there you can get the responses so this is how i got a lot of uh, authentic primary data when i did my research you know i i am but i don't know if you have that same privilege now during these tough times whether you can have you can attend face to face conferences and conduct the data but you can however uh, you know have an email questionnaire find the target population get the conference database from your friends send it across with a request maybe at least if 50% respond you can be very tenacious and keep reminding them about your you know a questionnaire and get the data so this is how you gather the data so you can gather the data by phone or even by an interview again another primary method of data collection for people who are working in literature research is uh, let me say i i come across a leading researcher who have talked about amitav ghosh who have already conducted an interview with amitav ghosh i can even have a telephonic interview with with that particular person and understand some of the findings about his interview so these things you can the privilege you have either you can collect data through skype you can collect data through uh, online interviews you can even design an online questionnaire through beautiful tools you have free tools today online called surveymonkey.com where survey monkey if you open survey monkey it will ask you what kind of questionnaire you have to design you just have to feed in the question that's all it will tell you whether you want a yes or no question or do you like a, do you want a likert scale question or do you want a five scale questionnaire or do you want an open ended questionnaire or do you want a close ended questionnaire you need not have any creativity you need to have a set of question go and feed the question in surveymonkey.com and then take the data circulate to all the people so this is called as survey research okay step 3 so uh, understand the nitty gritty of survey research you are a elt researcher step a you have clearly set the objective you are going to collect primary data for which you are going to conduct a survey you have clear objectives and then you are constructing a questionnaire based on your research methods and then step 3 you are deciding the sample target sample whether it is going to be teachers whether it going to be students 
how many teachers how many students whether you are going to have a telephonic survey or a live or face to face or a web cast or whatever this is step 3 step 4 you should not administer the questionnaire at this point of time okay what you should do you should actually pilot the questionnaire what does that mean piloting the questionnaire what do you mean by piloting the questionnaire testing sir yeah you will test it yes absolutely you will actually test the questionnaire but you will not use that data in your research you will test it with five or six people with experts and ask them if the questions are very clear if the questions are ambiguous if the questions clearly convey the meaning that you intend to convey uh, or the questions very crisp or the questions double barreled what are double barreled questions there are there are certain questions called double barreled questions where you will ask uh, two you will uh, you will ask two questions in the same question like you know or or the students uh, highly motivated in the class and do they have low anxiety levels these these are called two barrel double barreled questions you should not ask double barreled questions you give it to experts the experts will read the question and they'll do uh, five questions and each one you ask them the feedback is there any area of the questionnaire which is quite ambiguous anything that is quite sticky any place where the message is not clear the same thing applies to interview suppose you want to interview the author you need to conduct a mock interview with your professor with your experts ask them if the questions are very clear so you you actually do these things in survey research step 4 test your questionnaire okay and then you will administer the questionnaire now what you will do is you will just go and administer it either to a large sample or to a small sample and after administering the questionnaire you will get all the primary data of your questionnaire then you will analyze your questionnaire and then start your research because just i want i want you to imagine two things now you have preconceived notions you have speculations about your research problem but once you do a survey research methodology and collect data for your research you will cross check to what extent your speculation and what extent does your survey research match now i need a breather so i would want you to reflect on whatever i have been telling you for this past half an hour i mean uh, not even the just previous 10 minutes think about only the steps associated with survey research and tell me to what extent do you think survey research will be suitable in the context of your research that you are presently carrying are you planning to do any survey or would you like to take any survey in future to understand your problem better i'll take individual opinions and maybe come back and catch i mean continue the remaining part of my uh, discussion with you yeah i just like to have uh, your opinions one at a time you you can be very uh, short brief in your opinions very crisp in your opinions can i have a few volunteers who can sir can i uh yeah please 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 ma'am uh sir actually i'm just working on with this uh, survey uh selection now but yeah. i don't have uh, a few questions to you now before that i'll just explain what is your thing i'm uh, able to get it from that uh, what i'm doing now with this survey research clear with the data collection from the students uh, yes. just after preparing the questions uh, uh, as you have told the students uh, before it could go go to the hands of the students yeah uh, when when it was given to my guide that is ma'am pushya ma'am so yes. what happened is she herself had so much of uh, doubts in it and that rectification it can it was uh, that is i was able to overcome such things before yes. it could reach it to the uh, students uh, and or something Absolutely. so that uh, thing and uh, what what will be the uh, 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 expectation or what will be the result that also it came with one person that is with the uh, expectation of one person but if it is given to the student so i hope probably i think it can be done more with the students if it is done uh the output uh, research of what i'm trying to come out or trying to find out is uh, i think it will be good wonderful so you set a beautiful yeah. context 
in terms of yes. primary data collection identify the problems based on the first hand experiences from your students and then take your research from there well said ma'am absolutely yes. technically they use two terms research terms one is called piloting as you rightly said maybe you just give it to a guide and maybe five or six more experts in the field each one may have their own uh, views on in terms of ambiguity uh, or in terms of if the question is double barreled and so on yes. so that's piloting and technically there is a second term what we call as item analysis item or these items pertaining to your research questions and are these objectives related to the objectives of the study or is there any digression so all through your research or you pigeon holing your discussion on one particular narrow area in terms of collecting data so these are some of the things that you do at the primary stage of your data collection thank you ma'am for that answer anybody else would like yeah, to yes yeah. so one one thing the, uh, the question uh, which i would like to ask you is that uh, you, the question which i have just generated for the uh, students is necessary to give my colleagues or uh, to some other teachers that also i have to get into from them the question is yes actually ma'am uh, you, you it depends on your research problem now if your research problem uh, entails phonological aspects for the pronunciation aspects of mm. of uh, communication then mm. perhaps getting expert opinion or teachers interview questions will add a lot of validity to your data because students at this juncture may not have clear idea of certain nuances after you design the questionnaire you will explain to the students what these questions mean those data collection is authentic however if you give it to teaching practitioners who teach in the classroom then they will know the phonological problems better and they may give more calibrated answers and i believe that that can add more value to your work so you can perhaps try that with a small sample maybe of 25 to 30 people if you can yes. i think it, it just adds a lot of value to your work yes yes yes, yes. so thank anybody you, else feels yeah thank you very much ma'am that's that's quite a brilliant uh, observation is there anybody else who who feels that i can uh, maybe i feel that survey research will be suitable for my work okay uh, yeah uh, yes sir i just wanted to add sorry sir i was uh, sorry i was a little late today <laughs> Uh, oh, that's okay, sir. No problem. No problem. There was an emergency. I had to attend to. So sorry okay, for that. Okay, fine, fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that this uh, 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 saving because serving becomes important to understand you know, at on what level the students are, uh, especially when you're trying to uh, uh, help them uh, uh, develop their speaking skills. Yeah. Uh, I think it's better for us to to understand where they are, and uh, so that I can uh, uh, take up measures or initiatives. to right. help them improve their uh, uh, uh speaking skills so i think as you said sir i think uh, uh, conducting a survey with the students and also with the uh, with the subject experts also i think it would be very helpful sir wonderful wonderful okay uh, so you are you are the purpose of your you have a very clear objective in uh, designing a questionnaire because the objective of your questionnaire is diagnostic so you should also think about its purpose so we all do it as a kind of a diagnostic measure so in order to identify the problems you are doing it so it's quite kind of diagnostic thank you very much so we will move on to the remaining part of the presentation uh, just a minute i'll switch off the fan because a lot of external noise so uh, the, the, uh i mean using primary data collection method adds so much of value to your work so this is one of the uh, qualitative quantitative paradigms so survey method will come under quantitative paradigms because the questionnaire you usually discuss the uh, uh, results in terms of numbers i collected 50 students so many students responded 40 students responded for the first question uh so many students have answered in the positive so many students have answered in the negative my second question had a likert scale 1 to 5 so everything are shown in numbers clear measurements so it's a kind of an empirical or or a quantitative paradigm empirical or quantitative paradigm so 
so that, that's that's a, a important aspect of survey research so think about all these five steps till administering the questionnaire at this juncture you will not think about data entry there is a procedure i think in the last module i think one more professor is doing that module for you on how to analyze the data depending on the method so uh, if it is a survey research how to analyze your data uh, if it is an empirical design how to analyze the data if it is a theoretical research how to analyze if it is an interpretive how to write your interpretations so i think one more professor will be you know focusing on those aspects and finally you will be dealing with writing the report so this this is the essence of survey research so i hope that i have helped you to reflect a little bit on the survey research and i'm quite glad that a couple of you have told me how it fits into the context of your research so when we talk about survey research we'll move on to the methods of data collection we discussed about one method with, which is a questionnaire i will spend the remaining 10 minutes to very quickly walk you through some of the procedures and protocols of designing a questionnaire and then let me focus on the language i mean the literature researcher and talk about in depth interviews for their research so let's just move on to uh, how to design a questionnaire so first thing i'll i, I mean quickly run through I, I would just like you to read uh, it a little later so in your questionnaire first thing is are all the questions do all the questions meet up with your research aims that you are investigating secondly the length of the questionnaire ideally should be as short and crisp as possible you know you should follow the kiss principle keep it short and sweet it shouldn't be more than 12 words so uh, that that's the ideal length so and then third thing about the questionnaire is as we discussed earlier do a small piloting a small scale piloting for questionnaire design and then the order of the questionnaire this is a very very important people who design questions think about the order in elt research we call this as a grading of materials whenever you teach the students in the classroom we grade from simple to complex i mean you you take simple uh, tasks and then move on to complex tasks even in task based teaching that's one of the fundamental premises from simple to complex similarly your question order should be from generic to specific and you should have sub sections so choose start with simple questions and then move on to questions that are more focused and then use the appropriate terminology i mean research writing is a different cup of tea i know i have seen a lot of researchers who have who do wonderful research who have such flair and flamboyance when it comes to articulating their opinions but when it comes to writing i think research writing is altogether a different proposition it's an art that comes when you practice the reason why most of us uh, you know don't have very strong research writing skills is i did not have strong research writing skills when i started i was very very you know my writing was so dicey and once you start writing and rewriting because it's an iterative process you kind of fine tune your writing which means that in questioners you are supposed to use research terminologies please mark my words in oral discourse i can casually say something probably reflect on my uh, mistakes that i have made during the course of my talk if i listen to the recording it is okay but i do i write something in terms of scientific writing and i send it to print and if it is quite uh, you know poor in terms of writing style there is every chance that my, that my work may be rejected so in questioner the terminology is important not only in questioner through your entire research but here i am focusing on questioner you should not be using any jargons you should use the appropriate vocabulary there is a difference between using any word and the right word so for which there are a lot of free sources today what what kind of vocabulary to use what kind of sentence structures to use there are free volumes of books on research writing one such free volume in springer is adrian wall's work uh, adrian wall work the name of the researcher and the name of the book is english for research purposes if you have the book using that guideline you can write even for i mean formulating your questionnaire it could help the terms you use so 
question order should be from simple to com complex the terminology you similarly interview you conduct an interview with your author use the right terminology to ask your research question so these are some of the do's and we discussed about uh, very quickly let us discuss about forms of questionnaire now i hope that you all know what an open ended question is and what a closed ended question is what is an open ended question and what is a closed ended question may i have a feedback in this regard a sample of what is an open ended uh, question yeah Oh. Uh, well, yes. Sir, a uh, open ended question is like uh, we will have uh, uh, our opinion we can give our opinion whereas closed ended yes. question it's like more or like yes or no question. Absolutely, absolutely. So your question or forms of question you can decide whether it is going to be open ended. And usually a literature researcher if he's uh, asking any uh, conducting any interview it is definitely going to be open ended. it is because the research is based on so it's interpretive it's exploring the different layers so the questions are going to be open ended what is your view about this what is your opinion do you think that it is right during that particular period of time what do you think about the atrocious things that happened during the civil war so you you ask questions like that and it depends on person's expertise and their uh, skill to answer so you may interpret the question based on their opinions which is open ended but closed ended elt researcher will do that you know they'll ask some uh, yes or no questions they'll ask tick the appropriate boxes so i'm sure that in the elt research questionnaire it will be more or less closed ended and if a literature researcher is conducted an interview it will definitely be open ended so as i have given here in open ended i mean no ended questions there are a lot of possible options you use your own interpretations you use your speculations whereas that's not possible in a closed ended because the answers are yes or no true or false type or a tick any one box sometimes never always no i am motivated in the class tick the right box always sometimes never so like that this this is this is very empirical very quantitative so uh, each each one of these questions has their own uniqueness so you have to choose which questions can be unique and believe me an elt researcher can have a blend of both open ended and closed ended because an elt researcher may have closed ended questions with students but with the teaching fraternity when he is designing some questions i think open ended question will give him more clarity and more expert opinions so it can be a blend of both in elt uh, research so let me now focus on three popular designs in survey research so so far i have been focusing on survey research there are three popular designs in survey research one popular design is actually called as cross sectional studies okay i'll i'll explain what i mean by each and the second one is actually before and after studies and the third one is longitudinal study i will explain all these three types tell me which type will be suitable for your study uh, let's start with cross sectional in a cross sectional refers to you are only observing the prevalence of a phenomenon you know you see that uh, what are some of the common problems the students have in terms of uh, communicative competency it's a common problem what are the problems is it phonological is it lexical is it semantic is it syntactical is it morphological what kind of problems different students may have different kind of problems and it is a prevalence of phenomena you are only observing a phenomena in your cross section study using different samples which you do at the beginning of your study so this this can only give you certain insights for the causes of the problem not the solutions to the problem do you get my point you you are only kind of triggering you are only trying to associate the 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 causes and at this juncture you are not talking about solutions and it's a kind of a cross sectional study design cross sections you ask you know different sections of the target population so this is cross section and another type of questionnaire i i actually adapted this questionnaire for my research which is actually and most of my research papers i use this kind of questionnaire called the before and after design when i started my program i did a particular questionnaire with a student a kind of a diagnostic as charles has said and i analyzed what the diagnostic questionnaire 
after using my methodology after my entire intervention research is over i did a feedback questionnaire with the students with the same question asking them how they felt about the new pedagogy and this is called as the before and the after design survey design okay the before and the after survey design so it could be the most appropriate design for an elt researcher and any research survey that has both before and after design you can use only the design and complete your research you know so that that is the the validity of before and after survey okay so that is called the before and after and the third one is called as the longitudinal design so it is usually used to determine the pattern of change which means you know you you are observing it over a period of time like you know if you conduct for four years you do an observation uh, maybe in year 2 once again you go to the same sample size do a second observation and do the same question again after some time and you have three sets of data you read the patterns in all the three sets of data then you will make an analysis and this is also very very valid uh, research design called as longitudinal study design actually longitudinal interviews can be conducted but it is very difficult to find uh, you know appointment with your expert to give you longitudinal interviews so but longitudinal surveys can be conducted with students again with professors it is very difficult because uh, you it will very difficult for you to get the data from the same people as long as you trust people with only five or six people you now if you can you can go ahead and do it and in fact you can apply all these designs that i have dealt with so so far i have been i mean i i was discussing with you about survey design i think i have just made my point very clear on what the survey design is what are the implications of the survey design and what kind of prospects the survey design has for the elt researcher now if i go ahead with one more design uh, is it okay yes sir okay for me okay so yes thank you line what about others can i can uh, yes, i sir. yes sir fine sir fine sir yes okay okay benazir okay fine so uh, yeah so let me just move on to the uh, next type of method what is called as conducting in depth interviews now by the end of my talk i told you i had two objectives we have met the first objective i am sure by the end of my session most of you told me about your survey and you would have reflected on what kind of questioners so you we have met up more or less with objective a now let us move to objective b let us say that you are going to conduct a structured interview okay i told you right you some of you try if you are working on this uh, because i did that uh, because uh, i i just did some kind of ground work before i started this presentation maybe i just googled uh, live interviews as i said i had the opportunity to listen to an interview from rod ellis himself talking on task based teaching he himself talking about some of the problem areas in task based teaching so whatever model you choose take that particular your primary author google him in youtube see if there are some videos available probably such persons would have given some plenary talks I'm sure that most of the researchers say it uh, david newnan scott thornby raw delis or all reading researchers in elt they have you know a lot of interviews similarly even culture studies dalit literature So there were lot, there are lot of interviews on every author like you know as i said the other day about arundhati roy herself talking about uh, you know that that's kind of first hand experience those are called as interaction analysis so we are going to uh, now focus on how interviews could be a effective method of data collection and there are two aspects of interview one is called as structured interview and the other is called as unstructured interview now you reflect on which interview method you think will be appropriate 
will it be structured or will it be unstructured in a structured interview actually you will clearly give the questions to the researcher you will give the questions to your author so you will mail him the questions or you will send him the questions these are the questions i am going to ask and moreover you would have meticulously prepared the question in assonance with your research problem in assonance with your theory and then you will go and conduct an interview with your novelist or your author or your or a poet or your uh, you know a theorist or whoever let me tell you one important thing we don't have this in india but in foreign countries this is another new trend i saw in every university there is a particular profile in research department and he is called a methodologist methodology methodologist and they don't have one common methodologist who can guide all methods for example i saw in the university of uh, you know harvard there is a case study expert researchers who are going to do case studies if they want to use case study method for the research they will go to that methodologist and ask him on how to this is kind of consultancy similarly experimental methodologist they they may have experimental methodologist so they will go and ask the experimental methodologist and believe me it is not possible for one person no matter how sound he is to master all the methods that is why this for a university is they have a, a methodologist an experimental methodologist and uh, you know an ethnographic methodologist so if you are doing your research in this area you can go and consult those methodologists but you need not do that you can google it today yeah, so uh, you know that's that's the way you do it but i am driving home the importance of methods in your design as i told you earlier the objective of the methods chapter is after you complete your study if i have to carry out the same research you carried if i do the same steps that you did i should be able to end up with the same results that you ended up with that that is the purpose of the methods chapter it's just like as i said like a recipe you prepare this dish using those ingredients i know the process i use the same ingredients and i am going to end up preparing the same dish that is the method so when you talk about interview method there are two kinds of interview methods one is called structured methods you will already prepare your questions only 10 questions interview time given is only 15 minutes you will go 15 minutes you will interview your author you will record your interview you will tape your interview and you will use that particular tape for analysis discourse analysis interaction analysis call it whatever theoretical research call it whatever suppose as i said your research is on tblt and a direct interview analysis think about its value in anything you know so that that is the value of an interview in research so so your interview can be structured okay because if you see the devil's advocate one popular program i'm sure you might have you know uh, viewed these programs which is usually conducted those days in bbc it was uh, conducted by karan tapar he used to grill is an oxford scholar and he used to actually grill every politician and he was the one who grilled uh, uh, narendra modi okay that's that's a different proposition altogether and he actually ran out of the interview because it was not a structured interview the questions were not given to modi before the interview it was kind of unstructured the questions were asked off the hook and most of the questions were really challenging which brought out uh, as i said i don't want to purposely you know have any kind of political vendetta so i'll skip that but my objective is to drive home the importance of a structured interview and unstructured interview if you are doing an elt research or you know you will usually do a structured research but if you are very familiar with the how if you have a strong grounding on the concepts perhaps you can do an unstructured casual observations record the observations and use that interaction and interview one important thing about interview is you actually need not go to uh, the research is place to interview in today its context if you want to add value to your work you need not directly go and meet amitav ghosh or you need not go and directly meet shobadi if you are working on shobadi if you, you need not directly go to bipsi uh, sadwa if you are working on her so you can do an online interview or perhaps a telephonic interview and let me tell you you mail you mail them these people are ready 
I'm telling you, people who are usually the experts, I have seen they are so much willing to help people. I have seen that. You know, that's a beautiful culture in foreign countries. You think, okay, these people are leading experts. How do I ask them? You drop the mail and say, oh, they are so kind enough to help you. I have seen. But I have seen also people who purposefully don't disclose uh, certain things to people, who don't share their knowledge. Of course, such people are very, very rare. But commonly, I, sh I know that people share information and knowledge is meant to be shared. And this is a wonderful trend in European countries. People share unless it is quite a confidential, groundbreaking formula that is going to really uh, kind of create a revolution in the medical industry. We can't uh, actually share that information. So I hope you understood the difference between a kind of a structured interview and structured interview and unstructured interview. And you can also add interview schedule, not necessarily face to face. Maybe you can also have a telephonic interview. Telephonic interview, if you're not ready, who knows, you may have even an email interview. Prepare 10 structured questions, send it to them, request them to just answer those questions, show that in the next year, you have directly conducted an interview. This is called mixed methods. You apply all the methods. For example, one of the researcher is working on, you know, a particular model, a TPAC model. Probably who is the pioneer of the model? You have certain people have interpreted your model in this way. Prepare a list of 10 questions, send it directly to the particular uh, people who designed that model, the pioneer of the model, ask his first hand opinion, interpret the data in your theoretical design, what kind of value it has for your work. Think about those values. This is called as interview research, the primary data collection. Okay. And then, uh, you know, these are some of the types of uh, structured interviews. So, uh, let me give you some types of unstructured uh, interviews. They are called as in-depth interview, focus group interviews and oral histories. In this, there is one thing called focus group interviews. Now, let me tell you what is focus group interviews. Focus group interviews refers to choose your target population. Maybe you may, you may have conducted a questionnaire with a lot of students. The students would have given objective answers for the questionnaires. But you will set up some group interviews with five, five students. These are called a structured focus interviews, like related to your research focus. You will ask them some questions. For example, I know a particular researcher who researched on the interaction patterns in group discussion for which he conducted six to seven group discussions, video recorded those group discussions and he used the video recordings of those focus group discussions to identify the problems in focus group discussions. So this is called as group interviews. So there are a lot of strategies. So these are the methodological framework for your survey research to very quickly uh, run you through what I have been discussing so far. Identify your research questions in interview research, select interview type. Are you going to have a structured interview? Are you going to have unstructured interview? Are you going to have a face-to-face interview? Are you going to have a Skype interview or a telephonic interview or an email interview? And then construct some initial, you piloted your questionnaire. Similarly, pilot your uh, interview. Prepare some questionnaires. Ask your experts, your guide. Ask him, are these questions okay? Then they will uh, rework on the question and give you the question. So pilot your question and see if there are questions that does not... Uh, uh, heard the sentiments of your, this is called ethics in research and then choose your samples and then undertake the interview. Later, you may think about analyzing your interview and disseminating the information. So dear researchers, today I have dealt with you. I mean, I have dealt two important areas, one on uh, quantitative method in survey research, which is called the uh, questionnaire method. And the other is qualitative method, which is called uh, the interview method and the type of interviews. So to put everything into context, let me sum up that questionnaires are commonly used in quantitative research. And, uh, you know, it, it depends on a person's uh, opinion. You cannot really probe very much into questions. You can't further dig. What they have answered once is done. You can't ask any follow up questions. Because you give the data, you take the data. No follow-up questions. But interview is a qualitative method. You can ask them follow-up questions. 
your questions can be open ended you can standardize the interview you can go in deep and conduct focus interviews each one has its merits and demerits but you can even club both of them together together and this is a very important aspect on validity in research i think it's it's a different proposition to discuss a validity in research let me stop for the day and probably ask you you know how you feel that uh, this particular interview research fits into the context of your research and then we will stop there and wind up for the day i i mean uh, i i was planning to have longer sessions with you but then there are other professors who are waiting and this module also have to be completed so possibly in one or two classes i'll try to wind up uh, uh, the remaining part of my classes and give you the resources i know that my previous classes i haven't shared the resources i will share you share with you i think the first two sessions i have not recorded but i have recorded the other sessions i'll also share the recording in case you have time at your resource to re listen if you want to or you can just go through the uh, slides so i'll share both the links of all the video recordings of my methodology classes and probably in a couple of sessions i'll wind up so next class i'll be discussing on a very important design called the intervention design which is the true experimental experimental paradigm in research and actually that is my cup of tea and that is if if you if somebody is asking me uh, if i want to brand myself a methodologist i would call myself a methodologist in empirical intervention research so uh, i'll give you more in depth analysis on that i'm sure that will cater to the requirements of both uh, elt as well as the uh, language teaching fraternity and i believe today i have touched upon the requirements of both these group of researchers uh, one on a qualitative paradigm which is a survey a uh, survey questionnaire and the other which is uh, a qualitative paradigm which is interview so we discussed one quantitative paradigm which is uh, you know a questionnaire and one qualitative paradigm which is an interview i'll stop here and i just like to have your brief observation on to what extent can you apply this interview methods in your research we'll stop with this and continue our discussions later i may have a your observations finally one or two of you Uh, to what extent to what extent do you feel that the interview uh, method suits the yeah. context of your work yeah yes sir uh, i do feel that uh, interview as well as uh, survey method is related to can be used for my study uh, as charles sir said survey would help me uh, understand more even more better like a diagnostic test it could be used and interview again uh, it would help me understand about the methodology that i would be using okay uh, understand the uh, theoretical framework that i would be using correct better. wonderful wonderful so line a follow up question uh, would you like to interview somebody maybe i don't know if you could try to ask to this question at this stage of the research based on your data collection do you feel that you can interview someone to get a deeper understanding of your yes sir i didn't think about it previously but then after listening to you yes definitely i would uh, like to dig deeper like uh, to understand even more about the theoretical framework i would uh, definitely adopt the methodology wonderful line very well articulated because you use the right terminology and that is what research is because you use the term i know you you would just like to dig deeper i, I just like the usage very much Thank you, Lyn. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. You. Yes. Any any other observations to what extent interview will fit? Because you know, Subhana Ma'am also talked about how survey will wonderfully fit into the context of a study. Anybody feels that uh, research? Um, I think Benazir. Uh, 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 yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, as it's now, yes, uh, I'm trying to uh, uh, dig deeper into this understanding of uh, the speaking skills of students. I think two ways I think I can go about with this one is interviewing students so that I can understand uh, the difficulties that they are facing and uh, uh, probably the questionnaire will only give us certain certain information about uh, you know what they think 
uh, but I think when we especially uh, first hand information, I think we'd be, we'd be able to obtain from students by conducting interviews. Uh, and secondly, also interviewing um, uh, experienced professors uh, in, in language teaching. Uh, uh, maybe some experts, we have Yeltai, from Yeltai we have experts, and so some different organizations as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it also will throw a light on uh, uh, how I can understand uh, this particular uh, predicament and then how, uh, how I can improve, the, improve on my strategies. Uh, True, true. Yeah, Very good, adapt, adapt strategies. And, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Very good, sir. Wonderful, sir. This, this, uh, that will give you a more uh, precise and crystallized, uh, you know, view on your research area. Because as I said, we go with preconceived notions and there will be uh, many ideologies that you have already constructed, which you yourself will debunk in course of time after those, uh, you know, interviews. Yes. So very oh. well said. Very well said. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. sir. Yes. Any, any, any other observation from anybody? So Jamia is here, Benazir is here, Sharniam. Any observations on how it will fit? All right. Can we stop with this if there are no more observations? Yes, sir. Yes, Can sir. I wind up? Yes, yes. We'll wind up with this. Thank you, everybody, for attending today's class. I'll send you the details of the next class uh, a little later, maybe a uh, day after tomorrow or uh, after that. Maybe we'll have it in uh, one or two days. I'll send you the details. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. 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 Thank